Christopher Titus. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on on this solemn National Cookie Day. Yes. I, I remember when we marched and to make this happen. Yeah, and you remember when cookies were just held back and yeah. Yeah. totally just pushed aside? They would it's, sick German shepherds on, on people. Cookies, yeah. They would go after the cookies, though. <laughs> exactly. It was crazy. So I'm glad that we finally, you know, uh, by the way, p power to the people is yeah. all I'm saying right. on this <laughs> National Cookie Day. So uh, Good to see you, though, man. It's been a while. Yeah, hey, man, we, all made, we made it through COVID. Yep. Obviously, C still has it. Um, yep. <laughs> which is, thanks for having me in. Rick Close, six feet, six feet. Because six feet was the thing. That's viruses it are stops like... stops dead at six yeah, feet. Viruses yeah, yeah. are like, whoa, we can't get through this barrier of distance. Well, you were saying that carrying monsters, and you, you, you know, your, your life has been dark. Yeah. To begin with, but but dark in a way that connects with a lot of people. Yeah. Where do you have to go with to write your darkest <laughs> show yet? Well, this show, okay, so Carrie Monsters, these are stories that for many years I couldn't tell. Okay. And then a bunch of people... Um, died and now they're just stories i shouldn't tell <laughs> oh really uh, but there's going to be less lawyers involved so wow yeah. well that's very that's very promising yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh, uh i have i've had a very weird odd life and uh, like i talk about like uh, like I, I don't have any i don't have any normal stories like here's one about me getting kidnapped so uh i i live with my mom in in la and she uh her, basically my dad's child support would not pay for my care and her alcoholism so she <laughs> sent me to live with my great grandparents in detroit and a lot of people say tight you don't have that you have this uh you have this you, you're supposed to be a california boy but you don't right, have a yeah. california attitude you have this edge to you why and right, i always yeah. say first rule of detroit kindergarten fight club is you don't talk about detroit <laughs> kindergarten fight club <laughs> second rule of detroit kindergarten <laughs> fight clubs i'm a little teapot short and stout you got a problem so uh so i and i was living with my great grandparents and these are old people from another century these people you got sick around them they did not go <laughs> they did not go to the cvs they went in the backyard and dug medicine up right, yes. right. Yeah, i'm not dude, press, I'm, press oh, is that same way dude yeah, i yeah. had a sunburn once made me take a bath in vinegar yeah, yeah. yeah. I was yeah like, me too I, yep. yeah i was Swear like these old people are marinating me man are, yeah. we, are we out of cat food why <laughs> remember uh bee stings was uh meat tenderizer did you yeah. Yeah. Like, chewed yeah. tobacco did they just go through the pantry i don't yeah. know let's yeah. just put this on <laughs> it's like that scene in, in godfather godfather 2 oh. where uh young Vito, i think it's a uh, um it's a, is it sunny the baby sunny the the is has the cough and they put the candle, the candle on, on his chest yeah, yeah. And all that weird crap <laughs> yeah oh that's funny man so anyway i live with these the crazy people my dad had to kidnap me from them. I, it's a longer story in the yeah. show, but I wow. he kidnapped me, and he's on the plane. He's coming out to go. He's coming. He, he just like, first of all, he had to find out where I was because yeah. uh, my parents were divorced and they hated each other. So he he poked around, and by that I mean he slept with a couple of my <laughs> mom's friends, oh. and he found out where I was. <laughs> Your freaking and, life, man. And dude, well, and he's flying out. To, he's flying out to Detroit. This is a true story. And, and my dad told me the story. He's drinking like it's a superpower, just pounding right. alcohol, yeah. just loudly working out his kidnapping plan to the man next to him. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. And, and he's going, yeah, I'm going to go. Those old people try to stop me. I'm going to beat their ass. And, the guy, <laughs> and he goes, I'm sorry. I've been talking the whole flight. What do you do for a living? And the man says, I'm the Detroit Metro District Attorney. No! <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, my God. But, yeah, but thank God that horrible ex-wives are not rare because this man was going through divorce and she was messing with his kids. <laughs> so instead of arresting my father when they landed in Detroit, from this point of the flight forward, this man gave my dad a seminar on how to legally kidnap a child. <laughs> are wow. you kidding? Yeah, no, he was like Jesus the Tony Christ. Robbins of child abduction. <laughs> he was like, wow. first you got to believe in you. And, 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 <laughs> so that's one of the stories. And, oh, uh, my God. So I mean, the story just goes through my divorce. It goes through losing my kids and getting him back. It just, it, it's... When I wrote it, so for, I took it to the fringe. I'm going. I got booked to the Fringe Festival in Scotland, right? And I'm like, which the is amazing. Festival. It's the edge, man. Yeah, yeah. You're on the edge. It's a fringe. Yeah. Take this show, and here's how. Here, the Scots would laugh, and then they'd go, Jesus Christ, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, so, like, even they were like, what the hell? And I was like, you know, Mel Gibson is disappointed in all of you right now. <laughs> uh, and so then I brought it back to America, and I start getting standing ovations. I'm like, oh, America, we are the most screwed up country internationally. There's no other country as ruined as us. Wow. Well, I have to ask you because you said you're waiting for, for people to, to pass pass away, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm sure there's... Uh, there's some stories that my grandma Titus, there's a story about my grandma Titus that is so... My grandma Titus, uh, how do I describe her? My grandma Titus was a grandma with no hugs. Oh, <laughs> was your entire yeah. generationally speaking because you had a very abusive... Existence. Yeah, whoa, whoa. Yeah. I've made a lot of money off this. Is it abuse if I bought a house with it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with but how many, have you ever done like a 23 and, and abused or something that <laughs> takes you back? And, I mean, how far back were the seeds planted for this? Because it does happen. You know, you have a lot, you run organizations to help people. Well, I'm glad we're here for therapy. Yeah. I, uh, I just, I, I, you know, it's funny. My, I, I did 23 and me and a lying is in my DNA. It's literally, <laughs> I was raised by a manic depressive schizophrenic and a womanizing uh, schizophrenic. Who, by the way, my dad, 
dad had my dad had so many women it was crazy. My father, my my father, he's a single father in the seventies, so he was you know busy. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and and it was pre AIDS. And yeah, he, yeah. And, and he was also partly responsible for AIDS. I'm not saying <laughs> he was patient zero, but he knew somebody who knew patient zero. Oh and the weird God. thing, I was his six year old wingman. We'd go to these things called Parents ah. Without Partners, you know, and it, where you could take your kids. And, yeah. And, and he'd be like her, and I'd have to go over to these women and be like, my dad thinks you're gorgeous, and he'd come over. Hey, stop. Whoa. He's sorry. He's so he's he's not. He's being a bad. Hi, I'm Ken. <laughs> <laughs> like at, at six years old, I was a vagina grifter. God, man, that's wild. But I think when it becomes your life, like, 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 I didn't know. My mom was mentally ill. My dad was who he was. As a kid, you don't know. You don't know that's yeah. a weird life. You know, at one point, you just look around and go, "How come there's no other kids here playing Hot Wheels with me at the Whiskey River Saloon at midnight? Why? <laughs> how how similar was Stacy Keach to your your actual dad in your in your your sitcom? So here's okay. So so Keach, uh, okay, all right. So Keach was read the script and he was doing it so well, and then. My dad for the pilot came down, and in the middle of this, we're getting the shooting the pilot for right. My dad came in and hung out with Fox for like four days while we're shooting. Right. Stacy and my dad disappear for like five hours, <laughs> gone. Like what? Like no one can find them. I'm I'm sending like PAs to yeah. go. Where's my dad? What the hell's going on? They come back later. They both are a little lit. <laughs> Stacy looks at me and goes. I got it. <laughs> so he hung He's out with getting, my dad and basically Whoa. interrogated Dude, him and wild. sucked his essence out. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's was some wild. Act, some actor magic, and he would and and, uh, and he was always funny. But after that day, <sighs> there was an extra element of fear that he put into it. And um, my dad, my dad was really my dad watched the show for a while before it passed. And he it, and one day he just called me. He goes, "I want you to know, I didn't realize." That's how I raised you, wow. and that's what you mm. got to remember with people. People were always like you said; it's a it's a track. Like yeah, it's, yeah. It's not that my dad just was raised by these great people and then became an a hole. It's like no, no. They it was built in. It was yeah. A, it was it was it was a, it, it's a legacy. Yeah, <laughs> no, go. exactly. And, and, uh, but you've done so so much uh, with your comedy and and you know the different things the the the, uh, the organizations and charities you've been involved with. I have my home one show. Yeah, yeah to to yeah. fight that, which which is great, but. There is something about it. The absurdity of the family dynamic yes. leads to great material. Yeah. G let me ask you, given your druthers, <laughs> would you have had a pristine Brady Bunch existence or what you went through if mm. it meant that the course of your life would be dramatically changed? I would be selling Geico insurance <laughs> if I was raised by normal, nice people. <laughs> my, my mom yeah. was a manic depressive schizophrenic. She had a 185 IQ, spoke four languages, played concert piano, and shot and killed her third husband. Yeah. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. you're caught up now, people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, we, Preston and, wanted to and got acquitted and got a, got the guy's life insurance policy because he was abusive. So, oh, yeah. Wow. It's such a good story. You have to be really abusive to get down there. <laughs> Preston had wanted to ask you before before he uh, went on air about a story about... Uh, yeah, I, I saw that uh, that you had a, a, a really bad dental experience, and, and I was curious what that was all about. I had a, a dental near-death experience. Near-death experience. So, I, so when I was 15 or uh, 16 or 17, I... I, I uh, I was I was like I was the dumb kid in school like and the only way I get noticed was to be goofy. Yeah. So uh, we were hang, drinking with friends one night and we didn't have a bottle opener and I said you know man I got a bottle opener in my face oh, no. <laughs> and I <laughs> you were that guy I was yeah, that, yeah. I was that guy yeah, 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 yeah I was I was jackass before jackass was popular <laughs> and it was just my desperation and fear so I I popped this bottle and it broke off these three teeth so I lived with that for yeah. a long time. Um, uh, up until I smelled like death all the time. Uh, <laughs> and by the way, I wasn't born with great teeth. I mean, yeah, I mean th th these yeah. aren't mine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I own them now. Yeah. Right. These aren't mine. Right. <laughs> no, when I was, my teeth, when I, uh, my genetic teeth were just all over the place. My mouth looked like a bunch of people trying to escape a nightclub fire. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, I call them classic Irish teeth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so what happened was I, so over, over the years, I had gotten a bunch of dental work, and I finally decided to get these crazy implants. So I go to this dental surgeon guy, and and this, by the way, that, I tell this whole story in my last special of Zero Side Effects. My, uh, and and I go to this dental surgeon guy who's, he's like the best, baddest ass dude. He's from uh, Sudan. Uh, and uh, and he doesn't like to joke. Anyway, so here's what happened. Uh, he's, he takes out this giant molar. And I didn't, you, you're like, your molar's a lie from God. You yeah, get yeah, that. Yeah, like, yeah. In the mirror, it looks like a tiny little tooth. They don't tell you that underneath the gum line, there is this baby's head sized <laughs> piece of enamel that they, and he pulls this thing out and I'm on nitrous and he starts digging around. And, and as he's digging around, my ear goes, and I'm like, and I go, hey, who are you? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, whoa, yeah. whoa. He goes, I can't talk. And he goes, yes. And then, 
And he goes, oh, there's a nerve that goes past you, that, uh, the, the, where that molar was. I'm probably hitting it. Okay. I'm like, finally! I'm finally! No, it's definitely hit it! <laughs> so I'm freaking out. And he goes, I tell you what, I will give you some more nitros. Oh. And I was like, I say, I'm applauding. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, what happened was he cranks the nitros up so high, I go out. Next mm -hmm. thing I know, I'm standing behind him watching them work on me. Wow. And then I start floating through the through this bill. I start floating through the dentist's office. And I went, <laughs> I'm not, people, I'm not making this up. Yeah. I floated through the second floor, third floor. And next thing I was, I was hovering above Los Angeles. I, oh, I, I guess I had died and become okay. a drone of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making this up. I kept going. I went to space. And I'm not making this up. And, I, and I'm floating in space. And I can see the entire universe end to end. And I thought, my God. I picked the wrong dentist. <laughs> <laughs> but here's what really happened. In the middle of it, I was, I, whatever was going on was not good. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you that because what happened after, I, I could see the earth and the earth was so, I feel like we're, I feel like we're on, like I'm on, uh, in some like Larry King special <laughs> right, or something. Yeah, like yeah. And, and, and the earth was so small and I had this weird insight where I thought, oh, none of it matters. We're all going to die. There's 8 billion people on that planet and no one's going to be remembered. So why am I upset? Right. Why am I worried every day why do i panic for no reason mm. and i had this weird calm and and i figured like i was dead anyway so what does it matter, <laughs> what does it matter? And, and god was saying hey relax dude you're dead yeah, it's good yeah. and, and and next thing and you know, i'm slammed back in my body and i and i open my eyes and the dentist is shaking me this guy who's been calm in the calm he's like wake up are you okay wake up wake up breathe and 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 i was Holy like Jesus. I, and i woke up and i was like you're gonna kill me <laughs> 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 and if you kill me, my wife would have owned this building. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked out of there with a sense of purpose in life that I, I don't, it's weird. I don't, I don't worry about stuff anymore. Wow. Well, you, you had a classic. It literally, as you can ask my wife, it changed everything. Like, That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, and that was right at the beginning of the pandemic, maybe uh, two months into it. And, and, and my behavior, you can ask my wife, she'd be like, no, nah, he's a different guy. A switch no flicked. Yeah. 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 There is something to, to, you know, when you get those moments in life and they come and you're, you probably get two or three profound ones that are like re direction resetters. Yeah. And but they, you know, like yeah, it's. it's I still an amazing almost thing. fought. A, I still almost fought a heckler at, at Magoobies in Timonia. <laughs> I'm not making that up. I we had well because there's no one. There's bounce. There's no bounce. No one even wants to work for comedy clubs anymore. Right. So the Timonian, we had a, we had a night where there was this guy heckling. I was slamming him, Magoobies. and no one was making it Magoobies, and no one was shutting the dude up. Yeah. No one was shutting the dude. Up. And and they had these bouncers that had to be like they literally had to be freshmen, and yeah. they were like, hey, can you stop talking? You go, come on. Man, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm like, and then they, and so there was a guy in front of him, and and I was, I, and this guy wouldn't get up and leave, and I said, dude, I can't make you look any more stupid. I yeah, can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this guy in front of him, who was a big fan, turned around, and this guy, again, this guy, <laughs> this guy's shoulders started from the top of his head. It just went. <laughs> he was Shrek. I'm not making yeah, this up. Yeah. Found out later he was a correctional officer. This guy, who's a fan of mine, turns around, gets right in this guy's face, and goes, "It's time for you to leave." Whoa! <laughs> and the guy got up. Well, here's what happened. So that guy gets up. The guy who he finally gets up because he realizes he's going to get broken in half. Mm -hmm. He flips me off. Then he that guy bumps into a table with this other dude. Oh yeah, no, no, you got it. Okay, with this other dude, and, and that guy stands up, starts screaming. Then these two people over here, lady goes, "That was wrong, what you did." And then a guy yells at her, "Shut the f up, lady!" <laughs> and then her husband turns around and goes, "You shut the f up!" And then she turns to her husband and goes. You shut the F up. And then wow. this late, then I start hearing, ah, and I go, now what the hell's going on? And they go, the, the little black guy's uh, uh, wife is blind, and she can't feel him now, so she goes into a full panic oh, attack. No. Oh, my God. It's a melee. There's no way they can't get anybody out of the room. And they, come on, guys, you got to stop talking. About it. So I, you see me on stage go, that's it. I, I go, what's going on with her? They go, she's blind. And I go, God. And I go, that's it. I go, let's go, man. And I jump off the stage and yeah. I go grab one of the guys and, I, and I'm going to hit. I'm like, well, we're yeah. fighting. Oh my and God. Uh, I wear a lav mic too. So the audience is hearing <laughs> all, Titus all Psycho it. out. <laughs> yeah. But no one, they, I got to finish the show. Let yeah, me yeah. finish my jokes. I get a grab by a Philly PD guy, and I didn't know that. He goes, Titus, stop, 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 because I'm Philly PD. I got this. And when Philly PD tells you they got this, they're half criminals. Hey, got it. I got it. Yeah, you got it. This guy might disappear. I'm fine. So at that point, I'm still mad. And my, my wife, who's a comic, gets three inches from my face and goes, you need to get back on the stage right now. Control your temper. And if you've been married, 
That works. Yes. <laughs> I just turned. I walked back on stage. I gave the audience a five-minute lecture, uh, TED Talk about comedy, and then we. I got a standing ovation when we ended. <laughs> wow. You know, that's that's I have nuts. a question about uh, being a comedian, and and when these uh, this heckler, uh, you know, it's it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Yeah, you have how, to be no matter how long you've been in it, and 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 at some point, if you're not getting assistance from a club, is there a point where? You've you've exhausted what what you've done to try to you know so yeah there's can a, yes. you can you stop and go dude I'm I'm working here I'm this is my job I'm doing this can you is there you a, can you, but you, there's a there's a you you can't give up like that okay. that's, that's kind of giving up. you have to be like all right here's what's gonna happen I so, so I've done this before I go listen guy I was doing this Mark I I used to go to Mark Twain's open mics <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I I go I will shred your soul do you want me to because yeah. we'll do it right now you ready right and they'll be like yeah bring it okay all right what do you, and I'll go I'm gonna ask you three questions mm-hmm. and I go I'm gonna rip every single Thing, no matter what you say, I'm going to shred you. You ready? And I'll go, well, what do you do for a living? And they'll do it. Bam! I'll just do five minutes on what he does for a living. Yeah, yeah, okay. I go, you married? Oh, you're divorced? Yeah, of course you're divorced. And, I just, and, and, and I've done it where I've had people put their hands up and just go, okay, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, you, but you have to you have to show that you can do it. Yeah, yeah you, you and, you, to, and you did it. Yeah, you, you have to you have to approach it like, dude, I, I'm I, I am I'm a cage lion here all the time, and I will eat you. Yeah, and and that's and you have to have that. By the way, being a comedian, you have to you have to. Here's how delusional you have to be. Here's how you have to be able to think that you're the most. Special, important, <laughs> friendliest, most interesting, charismatic human being on the planet to walk up in front of four or five hundred strangers and make them laugh every ten seconds. Yeah. That's serial killer level <laughs> confidence. Right. Yeah. And so if you think you're gonna say something, you were because you work at Geico, you're gonna mess with me. <laughs> you're mistaken. Right. Well, right. so I, I'm not a comedian, but I, I love going to comedy shows. I love going to places like Helium. Um, but do you think, Chris, because you've done this so long, that the mentality of the person who is heckling you is that? Uh, they are either going to get roasted or they are, quote-unquote, a part of the show for that first stretch. That, that gets said a lot. Maybe we get off stage and they're like, hey, man, I was just being part of the show. No, you weren't. No, no, no. 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 You were, you're, you were you were being throwing, annoying. You were throwing axes at me, basically. Yeah. Try mm-hmm. that in a movie theater. Stand up right. Right, in, in, in a movie <laughs> and say, I'm being part of the movie for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 Steven Spielberg asked me to come here. <laughs> yeah, right? You know, the problem is, and, it, it, and I think this happens partially because there's a legend and lore of people like Patrice uh, uh, O'Neill, yeah. who literally did Master. that, got up and f- killed. And so, but that was, that's the outlaw. So is there a story that Patrice heckled one night and that just was shredded? It. That's, he, was, he was heckling and the comedian got, said, come on up on, you know, Here, stage. you do, you think and, you can do better? Did. Yeah. And And this is, you know, you know. <laughs> that's the last, you don't by want the way, to... that's the one story. Yeah. There's no yeah. one. Right. By the way, by you know, here's the thing. Exception uh, proves the rule. Patrice, Patrice was so funny. Mm. Like, off the, so, you know the story that he, they would go to the comedy cellar and comics would just sit at the table with Patrice. Yes to specifically have their asses handed to them. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. Patrice would just sit there and just go, bam, 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 bam. And, they, they, you know, the, the, I never got to experience it because I, I would have cried uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. from laughter and also because, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'd be like, Dad? Uh, <laughs> but, 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 but the legend of Patrice is that Patrice, it was like an honor to get roasted by him. So I love that he did that. Yeah. We had him in a couple times. Yeah. You know, we obviously, it was uh, in the, the last, you, you know, years of his life but man oh man he was just there are, you know you've you've got that energy the comedic it, it's there it's it's in the dna and he had that you, you know, know it's so i have a thing where i have to write it down and yeah. i have to work on it and i craft it patrice had and there's a few comics that have this have an innate ability to be funny off the cuff in a way that sounds written without even trying it. Yeah. Right. And Patrice was one of those guys. We said that that was we've had a lot of sad losses. Geraldo too. Yeah. yeah. Man, I hear Geraldo sometimes on the radio, and I just I'm like I I'm bummed out. Yeah. You know? He was so t- I I will watch his roast stuff because you know Jeff Ross obviously great as well. Yeah. yeah. They call him the you know the the, the master, but it, for my money. Geraldo was the guy. Brutal. 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 But but brilliant. And and Geraldo was always going up there with that 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 um sense that it wasn't a classic style Friars Club where they, it was always they were friends, 
A yeah. lot of times those Comedy Central roasts, they didn't know who the hell they were roasting. So, you know, right. so he he just <laughs> kind of had carte blanche to go, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to see this person again. I'm just going to eviscerate them. But the stuff was just genius. Yeah, and the yeah. thing about him is he was, he's actually like, I mean, he's a Harvard guy. He's super smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He smart. never made me feel dumb as a uh, as a viewer. Right. You know what I mean? Like, because uh, I'm not smart. <laughs> I did I'm, I'm with you, man. Twice. I'm with you. <laughs> D, DF student. That I'm here is insane. <laughs> Uh, uh, um, but yeah, you know, so Geraldo, uh, uh, we've we, we've lost some really great guys, man, and it's it's a bummer. Geraldo, whatever we, whatever he was into at that point, he showed up at the roast as. Sometimes I, I, oh. there's a couple of roasts where Geraldo showed up. You're like, oh, we need to clean you up. <laughs> but he was still we ridiculously had, funny. We had a couple of times he came here. One time he was not in a good way, <laughs> right? Like, Kathy, you, you remember he and he, he was, left. Yeah, he had to leave. Yeah, he didn't. He, 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 he was like five minutes from coming on, and then he goes, I can't. I can't. Do yeah. This. Hey, turn around and laugh. Too bad. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad I have that whore gene because it doesn't matter. I could, I could be bleeding out, and I'd be like, "Nope, we gotta horse some tickets." So I want to ask because I saw this. I'm sorry, but for, for, for all the guys that could, you would have, you have the. A multitude of stories they could have sent you in that way. Yeah. How do you think you've been able to? Uh, to divert uh, from that, from not being that guy, yeah. And uh, I have a tendency for with Pinot Noir to go pretty <laughs> hardcore. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, my dad was such a drinker, and it killed him. He was, I mean, he died at my age. So, uh, and my mom was mentally ill and got into everything. There, I think there was a. Um, it's weird. I never. I, I tell. I talk about this in the, in the show. I've had some suicide in my family, and I never, never once thought of, with my life thought of suicide. Never, you know. Uh, and, and 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 it's because. Uh, if you kill yourself, how are you going to plan your vengeance? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, like, like, don't get sad. Get even. What are you, what are you doing, you man? You've blown an opportunity. Like yeah. You know what's weird, though? So 47,000 people a year uh, in America uh, commit suicide. That's half a stadium. Yeah. And people kill themselves because they feel all alone. But what those people didn't know is they had 46,999 friends that shared their common interests. Yeah. 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 You know, we yeah. could stop suicide if we could just get suicidal people to meet. Yeah. Right, right. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think we need a place where yeah. suicidal people can hang out, like a theme restaurant. Restaurant, <laughs> you know, like Sadleys. <laughs> Come on down to Sadleys when you order the I'm a Loser burger and ask for cheese. We refuse to put it on. <laughs> Try the uh, appetizers here at Sadleys. Go for the what's the point shrimp poppers. <laughs> By the way, we have plenty of parking here at Sadleys, but we tow everybody. <laughs> Do me a favor, bring your suicidal depression down to Sadleys. Meet somebody just as depressed as you. Become friends and be so happy you make other people want to kill themselves. <laughs> Sadly, a great place to hang. <laughs> oh, to hang. <laughs> Oh, dear God. You guys are like, oh, God, we're going to get calls. Oh, no, 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 no. God. My sister and my mom. I, my sister and my mom. So uh, it's weird. I, I talk about it in this show, and uh, my sister was a... Uh, Is this was, in the new? Yeah, in the new yeah, show. And, yeah. I, and it's weird because there's I, I, I get to... I talk about my sister doing it, and then I pull off three jokes after it. That's like a triple backflip for yeah. a comedian because the audience is like, oh, my God. Like, Jesus yeah. Christ. They're, they're, <laughs> and um, But my sister was a poet and stuff, so I didn't go sappy with it. So it would have been such an easy bit to go sappy. Right. And because to honor her, I didn't because she would have been mad. She'd have been like, what are you doing? That's not your job. Not your job to hurt them. It's to make them laugh. So yeah. Bes Besides your tensions, have you ever had someone come to you and say, I, I really would like you to take that out of the act? Uh, I had, you know, it's weird. People react. No. I mean, uh, this is the whole thing about this woke thing at comic yeah. Everybody's bitching about, oh, well, can't say anything. No, dude, you just can't say it wrong. Yeah. You're mm. a moron. The yes. you, you, you know, it's consequences. You're saying stuff like Kanye. Yeah. Kanye's not 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 spe free speech. He's out of his mind. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at one point, you're just wrong. And and the weird thing is, that, and here's how I know when comics are wrong. If the audience got mad, you didn't set it up right. I've mm. talked about arming the children. Yeah. I've talked about my, my family suit. Suicide. I've talked about. I did. I'm whitey, and I apologize. Yeah. I. You can go anywhere you want to go. But you're just not skilled enough to lead the audience down the it's right the path. Job of a good comedian. It's yes, it's the job. And I can go yeah. through history. Lenny Bruce, George Carlin. They made everybody laugh. It wasn't woke. Yeah. You're, 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 you know what you are. You're weak. Yeah. Get off your ass and start writing better. Wow. There you go. Mm, wow. Sorry. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all good. Yeah, but you're, you're you're spot on. Uh, but it's easy to it's easy to you know. My dad was like, "Hey, you don't make excuses. 
you do your job. Yeah. yeah you know. <laughs> now find me a woman to bang. <laughs> 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 You know, go talk to her right now. My dad thinks you're gorgeous. Hi, I'm Ken. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's exactly it. All right, we got to wrap again. Christopher Titus is going to be at Helium uh, tonight and tomorrow, 7.30, 10 p.m., heliumcomedy.com. And don't forget, there's the Christopher Titus podcast as yes. well if you want yeah, to listen man, to Yeah, man, and the Armageddon so. update, which is uh, is really pissing people off in a good way. Dude, it is <laughs> It is great to see you. Thank you for Thank you guys for having me on. It's we awesome. We love you. Christopher Titus, yeah. gang. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Stay with us.